And the purpose of an icebreaker is to break the ice, which means to make, make us more comfortable with each other, because we're so excruciatingly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how do we make ourselves more comfortable? And I think a great way to do that is to find things that are the same between you and I. So over the course of this speech, I'd like you all to focus on that. Please focus on the things, the ways that you and I are the same. All right? Please try to do that for me. And at the end of the speech, I'm going to check to see who is focusing the hardest. And there's a, there's a prize that's going to appear near the person who is focusing the hardest on all the ways that you and I are the same. And uh, don't look for it. Don't ask how it works. It just works. So I'm going to break my speech into two sections. Uh, the first section is going to be for people who like details, but a lot of little details about myself, some of them more important than others. And the second section is a story. It's a personal story about my father and I from my childhood. And that story sheds some light on how I look at relationships and how I might define words such as love. So I'd like to, to start off with the details. And I remind you all, once again, please focus on the ways that you and I are the same. Uh, I've lived in Korea for five years. I'm currently teaching at Dunham University. I teach English there. And I am from Vancouver, Canada. My parents still live in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, you got Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? All right. Um, I've got about six years experience teaching, about three years experience in sales and marketing. Uh, my undergrad was in business. I'm a Red Sox fan. Uh, yeah, I bite my nails. Uh, I drink coffee at any time. I enjoy speaking with other human beings. That's a nice thing. I have uh, never punched a man in the face. Uh, I'm an only child. I've never been punched in the face. I peaked when I was 12. Uh, I was the smartest kid in grade 7, and it's been a slow decline. Ever since that I used to sleepwalk. I also used to change my clothes in my sleep. I'd wake up in a different outfit, which I found strange. Uh, I don't like cantaloupe. I, I, play the, I, I cannot play the guitar. Uh, I think awkward silences are quite funny, but only when I'm not involved in them. <laughs> I often wake up in the middle of the night certain that one of my arms is permanently paralyzed because I've been sleeping on it the wrong way. <laughs> and it's, uh, it, it's gotten so bad where I'm, I'm absolutely 100% sure that I'll never move my arm again. And I'll just sit there beating it and uh, eating my arm, and it'll, it'll come back to life. Mm. All right. Uh, finally, most importantly, uh, I, I tend to be a little bit sarcastic here and there. So that, that clears it up for all the details. Now I want to move on to the other part of my speech, which is a story about my father. And this story takes place in 1990. One, in 1992, I was 13 years old. I was an avid baseball player. I was obsessed with, with baseball. And I was at the age where I was moving up to a bigger field. And I was really nervous about it. And in general, I was quite nervous about baseball and, and, and hitting. I was a little afraid. And I was nervous when my dad would watch me, especially, or when friends would come to the game. The game was supposed to start at 5.30. I expected my dad to come at 6 o'clock and after we finished work. And 5.30 came around, we started the game, 6 o'clock came around, my dad wasn't there yet. Uh, and I was playing all right, and I was relaxed, because I didn't have to stress out about anybody watching me. 6.30 rolled around, uh, it was starting to get a little bit darker, and my dad still wasn't there, and I was okay with that. Uh, and I was playing well. 7 o'clock rolled around, it was getting a little darker. And uh, I played well, I was 2 for 3 with the double, I remember. And Finally, the game ended, and I was in the dugout cleaning up my stuff, and my dad still hadn't come, and suddenly I hear my dad's voice, and he says, good game, Pete. And I look up, well, where'd you come from? He's like, oh, I was standing over there. 
uh, behind the, the other team's dugout. All right, okay. So we're walking to the car. I'm like, why are you wearing that? Uh, why are you wearing that jacket? You never wear that jacket. That's a uh, an ugly old jacket. He's like, well, I wore this jacket so that you wouldn't recognize me. Hmm. All right. What? Why'd you do that? Why? Why would you? Why would you do that? Well, you know, it's it's your first game in a, in a new league, and it's a bigger field, and I didn't want you to feel the, the stress of of me watching. And I just kind of thought, oh, all right, thanks, Dad. And I uh, didn't think much of it. And then years later, just thinking about Dad one night, and it just dawned on me that, wow, what, a, what an incredible, what an incredible uh, symbol for the kind of love and caring that, that, that a dad should have for a son. All these tiny little gestures of, of unconditional support and the kind of thinking and premeditation, um, real love that goes into to raising a kid. And it, it was one of these great moments where I realized that love is really an action that should take place between two people. Not only just a warm feeling, but it should manifest in tiny actions uh, every day, as often as we can, we can possibly manage. That concludes my story, and I'm sorry to get touchy-feely. I want everyone, just give your head a shake. Okay, give your head a shake. And I want you to think back at everything I talked about, the small details, as well as the story, and think about all the ways that you and I are the same. And the person that was focusing the hardest is going to have a chocolate bar underneath the table in front of them. So I'd like everyone to look under your table. There's a little shelf. Everyone, please. Everyone, please look under your table. There's a little shelf. Our guest is too hot was focusing harder than anyone here. <laughs> so congratulations. I think I've gone over time. That concludes my speech and I'm looking forward to chatting more with your roommates.